Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Callum Johnson. You're back on July the 2nd after nearly, yeah. eight, well, no, just over eight months out against Igor Mihalkin. Um, how uh, satisfied, happy are you that you finally got a date to get back in the ring? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy just to be training like, and be back to fighting fit because after what happened in January and the, the, the couple of months after, I was very down and... Uh, you know, wondering what what we was all about. So I'm back again, and I'm happy to be going again. Good stuff. Now you were scheduled to face WBO champion Joe Smith Jr. back in January. Unfortunately, he came down with a case of COVID and had to pull out. How devastating was that at the time? Because you waited a while for that second world title shot. Yeah, it was uh, just like my world come crashing down on me. Um, everything you know, ever worked for just took away from me again. And, you know, it's hard, it's hard to deal with. It was hard to deal with, I'll be honest. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. I've let it go. And uh, just looking forward because I realise that looking back at what ifs and what could have been and should have been, you know, <laughs> don't do any favours. So just, just moving on. And just the last one on that, how bad was the actual COVID itself? I know some people get really bad, some you barely know. Yeah, no, I just snotty nose. I've had it twice. I've had it twice and both times really just slight headaches, snotty nose, and that's about it, to be honest. Are you back in, as we said, against Mikalkin? I think probably best known for his fight with Sergei Kovalev a few years ago, where he recently challenged also for the European title. What, what can we expect from him, do you think? Um, but look, he's a good fighter, isn't he? You know, he's a good fighter. He's a southpaw. You know, he's, he's mixed it with the very best, like you say, Kovalev. And he was competitive in them fights as well. Uh, and I think he was competitive in his last fight in the Europeans until his eye until his eye went. So, you know, it's, it's a tough fight. You know, it's a tough fight. He's a, he's, a, he's a world, or he's been at world level. He's a, a world level opponent. So, you know, I'm expecting a tough fight. Um, and I'll, I'll be going in expecting a tough fight. As you said, he was competitive for that European title against Mathieu Baudelik, uh last time out. Is that a fight that you would have wanted maybe for this one? I know you've been linked with the European title before. Yeah, well, again, I'm not really too bothered on, on particular people, but we was due to fight for the European title before, wasn't we? Me and McElkin before the pandemic struck. So it's like it's come round again. And obviously, well, for, but obviously it's not for the European title this time, which would have been nice if it was. Um, you know, my my goals is to try and get try and get that shot again if I can. Um, you know, I've got to keep winning. I've got a tough test, you know, in a couple of weeks. So just got to try and get through that and hopefully you never know, see what happens. Now, this weekend, I'm sure a fight that you'll be watching closely um, is between uh, Artur Baturbiev, who you've shared a ring with previously, and Joe Smith Jr., who you were scheduled to fight in January for three of the four major belts at light heavyweight. How do you see that one panning out? Um, I don't see no other way than a better be able to win. Um, I just feel like Joe Smith, you know, he can punch, he can fight, but just what does he do better than better be able, you know, he doesn't punch as hard, he isn't as strong, he can't box as well, nothing like, and he can't fight as well, but it's as simple as that. Um yeah, okay. There's always that chance. There's always that chance that he, he lands because he can punch. But I just don't see it happening. I just don't see it happening. How do you get back to that spot to get a chance of the winner of that? Your WBO number five at the moment, um, Anthony Yard number one, expected to get his shot before the end of the year. Um, I think there's uh, Zerdo Ramirez is in there as well. He's expected to fight Bivol for the WBA. So that frees up two of the spots. How do you get from, say, three to one? I think just basically got to, got to win my fights that I've got. Um, Yard will probably get his shot and hopefully Frank can work his magic. <laughs> that, that, that's it, isn't it? You know, it's, you know, to get into that mandatory slot, you know, it's going to take some doing, I suppose, over the next... I mean, it needs to happen sooner rather than later. So, I mean... The way I see it, you know, I've got to get through this fight and maybe another one, um, you know, see what happens with Yard, if Yard gets his shot and then maybe get the crack at the winner of Yard and I'd say better be, have, you know, that's, I think that's who it'll be, won't it? Um, but, you know, again, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, do we? So we can't really say what's going to happen next week, next month, you know, next year, whatever. 
I spoke to Joe Gallagher a few weeks ago and he was talking about the possibility of you fighting Yard. Obviously, Anthony's decided to wait out and, and take his title shot next rather than take a, a fight in the interim. Do you give him much of a chance against Baturbia if, if it is him that comes through? Um, yeah, I think I think Yard's a good fighter, but it's one of them in it as well. You've got to remember, I know myself, I'm 36 myself. Better be 36, 37 now, I think he is, is he? Yeah, um, so you know he's 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 getting to them later years himself. So it depends if he's still got what he had three years ago, which I'm sure he will have. Um, I feel like I have. So we'll see. But yeah, but I, no, I, I mean I favour better be ever. I mean I think he's the best lightweight in the world. Um, you know that's including Bibble, that's including Canelo, that's including everybody. So you know I don't see anybody beating him. Um, you know, but there is Except always that you. chance. Well, yeah, I mean, I was close. I come close-ish, close-ish. You know, if you hadn't have, if you hadn't have sidewinded me in that first round, who knows? I might have had more energy and more more thought process to it. But I don't know. It's all. It's all again. It's all lifts, buts, wooders, cutters, and shudders. At the end of the day, you know, I, I went in there. I had a go. Um, I certainly, I certainly put him in uncomfortable positions, and he knew he was in. He was in a fight. Yeah, okay, it was only four rounds, but for them four rounds, it was a very, uh, very exciting fight, really. Um, I don't think anybody's ever boxed has really put him, yeah, he's lost rounds and things like that, and he's gone further. Obviously, he's gone eight, nine, ten rounds and things like that, but no one's really ever made him uncomfortable. He's always looked in his comfort zones in every fight he's ever had, apart from mine, you know. So, but at the end of the day, you know, you can say all that all you want, but at the end of the day, he's still done me. So it is what it is. Is a thought of a rematch with him for the belts, is that what kind of keeps you going through injuries, illness, inactivity, everything like that? Yeah, I mean, that, that'd be brilliant. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, I'm sure it's a fight that would definitely sell as well. Definitely be people would be interested because, like you said, we are both like similar ages. Um, our first fight was a barnstormer, although it only lasted four rounds. It certainly captured the imagination of um, the boxing public, especially the American audience. They they really loved it. So I'm sure they'd be interested to see it again. Um, you know, t- would it be sensible for, for either one of us? Probably not, but <laughs> it's what we do, isn't it? <laughs> it's what we do. You've got everything to gain as well. I mean, it might not be sensible for him as a risk, but for you, three belts on the line by then. I mean, it's, it's a great, it's a dream yeah, shot. Well, yeah, of course, it's a dream come true, and that that it's like you say, it's things like that that still keep me on, still still keep me going because, you know, it's it's no fact that my career has been an absolute like it's been a bit of a joke to be honest with the stop starts injuries setbacks personal problems everything else so it's uh but there's always that little thing that just keeps me there keeps me going because I'm always you know I've got the Joe Smith fight I was always I was always that little step from getting that world title fight again and then I got it and then obviously what happened in January and it's like why am I still doing it but I just feel like there is that one last chance for me well, fingers crossed. Um, outside of the gym and the ring, how's everything going? How's your family? Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Everyone's sound. We're uh, enjoying the summer. <laughs> kids are kids are half behaving. The old the older lad now is four. Well, he's fourteen next month. He uh, he thinks he runs a gaff. Oh, does I he? Think, I think he thinks he's my dad. <laughs> Brilliant. Any any interest in putting on the gloves? No, no. He has a, he does a little bit of training and things like that, and he can half whack. To be fair, he's got a bit of a he's got a bit of a natural dig on him, but he's he's not he's not he's not interested, you know. And it's one of them as well. I half think to myself, thank God for that. You know what I mean? Because I know how tough the sport is, and I think could I go through all that again, like my dad did with me, and what I've got to do is, and I imagine it'd be even harder as a father. As well, yeah. you know, the emotions and everything else. Because I remember my dad used to get so nervous before fights. And I'd, I'd be in the change room sometimes. And I said, what's up with you? And he's like, no, no, I'm all right. <laughs> and he, he, he was shitting himself. I was saying, cheer up a bit. You're all right. It's not you that's fighting. It's me. Chill out. <laughs> yeah. But as you say, you don't really, at the time, you don't understand the emotions of a father until you become a father. And like you say, now I've got a 13, 14-year-old lad. And, you know, if he was to box, 
you know, I can imagine the nerves that I would have would be terrible. You know what I mean? And now I think back to how my dad used to be, and I think, yeah, that's why. <laughs> or maybe it's for the best then that he's going in another direction. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Great stuff. Mate, really, really appreciate your time. Looking forward to seeing you back in action as well, July the 2nd uh, against Mihalkin. And, um, yeah, let's catch up again after the fight. Thank you.